Jamie, I have a question. Have you ever had a sexually transmitted infection? You can tell me, I won't tell anyone. Our viewers won't either. I have never had a sexually transmitted infection. I'm being very honest. I didn't expect you to answer the question at all. So I appreciate your honesty. Listen, having an STI is nothing to be ashamed of because they're more common than people think. According to the CDC, one in five people in the United States has a sexually transmitted infection and more than half of new infections occur in people aged 15 to 24. So this applies to basically everyone, especially that group. Safe sex is very important. Sexually transmitted infections, as you mentioned, they are very common. They're something that we see every day. I see them in my outpatient internal medicine clinic. I see them in the emergency department. I see stages of them in the intensive care unit from time to time. So I think it's very important for the public to be aware of sexually transmitted infections, as you suggested. And making the public aware is what we do. I'm Dr. Alok Patel, board certified pediatrician and someone who just progressively talks louder if it involves public health. And I'm Dr. Cedric Jamie Rutland, board certified pulmonologist, internal medicine and critical care specialist. And this is Doctor Saying Stuff, a show where we just chat about topics that you're all searching for because we're curious human beings. This is a collaboration with the Association for Healthcare and Social Media because social media is where people get their health information now, whether you like it or not. Today, we're talking about syphilis. It is Googled a lot. I think it's important to go over the facts of syphilis, what it is, what causes it, how we treat it, and the epidemiological factors um, that have led to its perpetuated existence. Over 130,000 cases of syphilis reported in 2020, including 2,000 in newborn babies, congenital syphilis, where kids are born into the world with syphilis. It is devastating. I've personally seen patients with this. So it's important we get down to the facts. So to break it all down and help us out, we have infectious disease doctor, Dr. John Persichino. Dr. Persichino, thank you so much for lending us your brain. And here are seven things that you all need to know about syphilis, and it's not just practice safer sex. Fact number one, syphilis, surprise, surprise, is a sexually transmitted infection. It is most commonly spread through sexual intercourse, whether that is anal or vaginal. You can have ulcers in many parts of your body and if they come in contact during sexual activity, you can spread the disease. There is also another method and that is vertical transmission from a pregnant individual to an unborn baby, a fetus. And then that baby can be born with syphilis or congenital syphilis. But it's important to understand that you are not likely to get syphilis from inanimate objects, things like doorknobs, bed sheets, or clothes. But when in doubt, you always wanna make sure you chat with the healthcare professional and you're practicing safe sex. Know your status. That is one of the most important things you can do. Fact number two, syphilis is a spirochete. And I know that sounds confusing because most of us don't speak like that. Oh, it's a spirochete. But actually, when you think about infectious organisms, you guys have all heard of bacteria, you've all heard of fungi, you've all heard of viruses, you've all heard of parasites. Well, a spirochete is a type of bacteria and it has a specific shape in the way that it looks under a microscope. Now, if you look under a microscope, you can see that it has this kind of helical type of shape. It's this long helix looking organism. It almost looks like a really long snake, right? But it's a microorganism. No, I, I just think they look little spirally demons, like the little snakes from Medusa's head that are just hanging out there and ready to infect people and they're kind of horrifying. Number three, anyone can get syphilis, but there are certain people who are at higher risk or certain demographics where the disease is most commonly found. Dr. Persichino, can you bestow some epidemiology on us? Which patient populations, which groups of people is syphilis more commonly found in? Majority of syphilis cases in the United States at this time occur in men who have sex with men and from the ages of 15 to 24. In terms of where syphilis is most prevalent in the United States, and this is the state syphilis rate per 100,000. And as you can see, the majority of syphilis cases in the United States are in the southern states. Fact number four, thank God syphilis can be easily diagnosed and it can actually be cured. 
when you look at syphilis, it's one of these organisms that's easily treatable with a penicillin and it's easily diagnosed with the testing that we have today. It's also one of the reasons as to why this is an organism we would like to er eradicate completely, get rid of it, be done with it because of the fact that it's easily diagnosed and easily treated. So Dr. Persichino, because it's easy to diagnose and easy to treat, my question to you is really quite simple. What is the most common treatment? You can use intramuscular injections of bicillin or oral doxycycline. Can it be cured? Yes, it can be cured uh, with treatment. However, you can uh, get reinfected from your partner. Fact number five, syphilis has no known animal hosts. So theoretically, we should be able to eliminate it. Now, there are a lot of infectious diseases in the world. And the ones that can go and jump on and survive in the bird population or in mice or that are passed on from rodents to mosquitoes are really hard to eradicate, right? But the ones that are just in humans, theoretically, we should be able to eradicate them. So Dr. Persichino, what are the biggest barriers towards eradicating syphilis forever? What big interventions do we need to do on a public health level to get rid of this spirally, nasty hair demon bacteria for good? Of course, a simple answer to that question is stop having sex. Well, that's not gonna happen in America. But what I wanted to let you know from my um, perspective is that in order to decrease the incidence of syphilis, we had to have monogamous relationships. And if we're outside the relationship or with multiple sexual partners is use consistent and correct condom usage. Because syphilis can be present, people don't know. If a pregnant person has syphilis and they don't know, can it damage the fetus? What kind of protocol do we have for individuals who become pregnant and may be at risk of syphilis? If a pregnant patient does not know that she has syphilis, it can harm the fetus. Syphilis without treatment can actually cause blindness, hearing loss, seizures, mental retardation, and even death. There is a protocol in place to screen syphilis in pregnancy, and that starts at the first prenatal visit and at 28 weeks of pregnancy and up to delivery. Number seven, the final fact, which is kind of scary, is that syphilis lesions can actually be painless. So in primary syphilis, the ulcers that physicians use to diagnose the disease may not cause any pain at all and they can appear on your penis, anus, vagina, rectum, your lips, several places. So you have to be astute and know that there is a concern and be honest with your physician and make sure you initiate treatment. Because guess what? If primary syphilis does not get treated, it can turn into secondary, which can then turn into latent and tertiary syphilis. None of this is a good thing. Dr. Persichino, what lesions do you look for to say, hey, even though they don't hurt, I'm worried about syphilis? So if someone has a painless chancre or a rash on their hands and soles, it makes me think of syphilis. And you'll see this classic macular papular rash on the hands and the soles of the feet. If I see these two physical examination findings, it's I have a high suspicion for syphilis, which warrants diagnosis and treatment. Now, now that you may or may not have been adequately scared by the reality that is syphilis, we need to make sure you wrap it up. W-R-A-P. <laughs> That's a wrap, bro. Get it? A wrap. We hope that you guys subscribe. So please go ahead and hit that subscription button. Subscribe to Dr. Saying Stuff. Let us know your opinions. Ask us questions. And perhaps we'll do an episode on one of your questions in the very near future. And if you read up on syphilis or if you have your own opinions or thoughts and it's something that we didn't mention, throw it in the comments because here's the joy about being Dr. Saying Stuff. We're all about that continuous life of learning. You know how it goes.